Hello guys and welcome to Culture Talks episode 17. We are absolutely delighted to be joined with Mr. William Redpath. Hello William. Hello. Um, well, how are you? Delighted to have you here. We're very well. Um, and just to do a, a tiny intro before I hand it over to you, if anybody doesn't already know William, he only just before we even hit the record, we're learning new things about him all the while. Um, in a nutshell, from my understanding, William can help you to create experiences with your team um, and team build and exercises with a little bit of difference in it. Um, and I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm not going to pretend I know everything. But William, do you want to give us a wee bit of an idea of who you are, what you do, and why you're here? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that's great. And thanks so much for having me along um, this afternoon. It's, it's wonderful to be part of your, a part of your series. So thanks so much. Um, yeah, I think that like, so, so I, I started my business uh, it's kind of earlier this year, but really the idea, I always like to start with why I wanted to do it really. And the idea behind starting this business was I just worked with so many people, I think kind of around my age that are, I'm going to tell you all down, but around my <laughs> age, let's call them millennials, let's pretend I'm a millennial, um, that I guess are maybe a little bit lost in their, in their career and they're maybe not really sure about what they're good at and really what i wanted to try and do was to create these learning learning development experiences really that help people understand that and then think about now that they know what they're good at how can they use that to kind of develop their career so really there's a there's a lot of like value in that for companies because usually the companies that i'll speak to have issues probably a bit like you guys you know in terms of the kind of conversations you're having around like attrition you know they've got like staff turnover yeah. issues um, you know, they've got like staff engagements quite poor and that usually manifests itself through like a lot of sick days uh, with people and, and lateness and other things. So I try to talk to those guys. And so once you kind of start getting into some of those issues, you can actually reduce that. And then obviously that improves the overall kind of business situation once you get in, once you get into the nitty gritty. My sort of philosophy really in terms of how I get, how I get people from A to B is I try to use experiences. So I call them experiences lots of different types of ways to do it, but essentially I try to embrace like traditional and like modern uh, delivery methods, which for nice. example, would be your classic kind of like outdoor leadership days, well, write programs with different organizations around kind of like leadership uh, topics, things like communication, decision-making, problem solving, and get people along and, and, and get them there for a day and try and, and try and work through all that stuff. Um, so there's kind of that kind of outdoor leadership stuff, which is, which is a lot of fun and obviously quite conventional. But then we're starting to see, you know, the advent of a lot of new technology, which is really exciting and you can get there with, with other things like virtual reality, which we're using as well, which is a lot of fun. And uh, we've got our kind of online experiences as well. So we've got a whole bunch of online escape rooms that we use, uh, which really challenge people and um, are good. It's kind of putting people through those stress tests. And then we're using more and more now as well, business simulation games. So for those, for the uninitiated, because that sounds really boring. Um, Not at it's, all. It's, yeah, it's no, it is good, it is good. <laughs> but it's, it's basically like, if you can imagine, maybe we've got a team of 10 people, we all work together in department. But now for this day or half a day, we're going to try and start a confectionery business. And JP, you might be the managing director. Um, Sean, you might be in accounts. Uh, I might be in marketing. And what we're going to try and do is make decisions and do things um that hopefully stop us from going bust but the whole idea behind that is there's lots and lots of tie backs then to people's kind of jobs and their kind of day-to-day -day. and whenever you put people into those situations because it does put them under a lot of pressure you start to see sometimes where the gaps are and, and for me just to kind of round that off it was just simply instead i think traditionally these types of experiences have been used to maybe uh develop some of these skills so we've come into the day knowing that the outcomes we want to get are improved communication techniques, you know, improved problem solving, better empathy with my colleagues, you know, these types of these types of ideas. Whereas what I'm trying to do with them now is just to like use them much earlier and almost use them as like an assessment or a diagnostic tool. So basically you're putting people through these at almost the beginning of a program to then be able to recommend what they actually need in the future. So that might be some coaching, it might be, you know, a further consultancy in a strategic way. Um, but basically you're doing like you know you're you're identifying what that organization and what that that company actually needs rather than going in and just selling them something that they may they may not get a lot of value out of if that makes sense but but yeah. basically in a nutshell i believe that 
the best way we can learn is through experience, is learning by doing. And I kind of speak to my sort of like youth work background. I've sort of been involved in youth work for the last six years. And it's very much uh, a way that, um, you know, organizations here, which are amazing, try to connect with, with young people that, through that whole informal, informal learning. And as we discussed earlier, there's such a great application for that in the corporate world as well. So I'm just, I'm having a lot of fun with it. But that's really just the, I guess the problem I'm trying to solve is just trying to help those organizations who maybe suffer a bit from staff engagement, um, you know, have got those kind of attrition levels and trying to help those guys solve those problems through those methods, really. So that's, that's it. Right. That's my introduction. <laughs> Start so it's, it's great that actually the variety of stuff that you have there as well. And I 100% agree with you. That, that sort of practical side of things is brilliant. You, know, you need to get stuck and get hands on and just see how people react to different scenarios and situations as well. Like, see, for example, see on a day, a particular day that, that you have a, a group there, say you're focusing on maybe leadership on that particular day. How did people react? So you're, you're going to have people perform on, on the that are natural sort of leaders, I suppose. Um, and are going to perform really well, but you're going to have people who are probably struggling and maybe even realizing that they don't have the qualities at that point, the leadership qualities that they maybe felt they had before, or like, how do they react to it on the day? And how do you, how do, you do that? Well, I think when you talk about that word performance and performance on the day, it means different things. So usually at the beginning of a, of a day, you know, we'll, we'll tee it up where we'll explain the kind of things that we're looking for from people and the type of engagement we want. So you can talk about performance on a day. And usually what people assume that means is performance within a task. So I'm going to ask some people to go rock climbing or I'm going to ask some people to do something else, like it's some team game or whatever it is. And um, usually people assume that means that if I complete it first or faster or better than other people, that means I've, I've done better, therefore I'm a better leader. But actually it's, it's not about those things. I think when, to answer your, I guess to answer your question directly and, and try to think about um, how do I kind of assess that on the day? I think that the thing I look uh, I look for most within a lead, say it's a leadership thing that we're doing this leadership program. Yeah. The thing I look for most uh, is the kind of authenticity of people. And, um, and what I mean by that is I try to get people to f um, feel comfortable in their vulnerability. So uh, that basically means that like people are through the course of the day, they're happy to take a back seat. They're happy to let other people um, stand in and be the leader. They're happy to listen. They're happy to take instructions and they're happy to do these things really because they're, they're mature enough within, their, within themselves, they're comfortable in themselves and sometimes those are the trappings of a good leader. So I think it's just the first thing I guess you do is just define what performance means and it's, we're not, it's, it's not like an outdoor, it's not a theme park, if you know what I mean. It's like where it's the, the purpose of that is entertainment or social thing. It's, it's to do with uh, the performance versus what outcomes we are trying to get. So it's it's very it's very much around the, around that thing rather yeah, than thinking a, about who can climb the pole fastest. A, a fun learning experience kind of thing. But and as you say, you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that I always think about that I would talk to my kids about. And then going into the workplace, I could do the exact same talk. <laughs> and yeah. the workplace, that's amazing. High chance for other. You're saying about these work obviously, which is. It's slightly different back to my kids at the age they are, but but it's amazing how these things are transferable. And see when you when you make it fun as you are, it just makes it a lot a wee bit easier. Do you know? And I think in that kind of circumstance as well, people have a chance to maybe even assess themselves without anybody saying anything. And it's at that point maybe they sort of realize their own strengths and weaknesses as well if they are you know, if they're No, no, and and I think one of the big things about the days we do is that we always say they're going to finish at five o'clock, but they never do always finish a bit earlier than that. But that's deliberate because you want people to kind of go away from that day feeling as if they're not completely drained. I'm still got some energy to think about that because, of course, the feedback and the reflective practice at the end is probably the most important part of the whole day. Yeah. Uh, you need people to, um, it, it doesn't always happen, but most of the time, actually, people are, are quite happy to share, usually because they're there and they know that they're coming along to try and open up and try and. And try and be conscious within the day and i think that it's like you you almost you almost want people to kind of yeah you almost want people to have that kind of vulnerability that i was talking about yeah. um but there's but there's other things i mean like you know you talk about you talk about like things you can you can get out of the day and then the tie, the tie backs you mentioned about the workplace because sometimes the challenge is like well what's this what's this activity that i'm doing uh, got anything to do with um, with me sitting at a desk in an in a big office with a hundred people? Well, actually, you do things like where you get 
a set of instructions, for example, and they're set up deliberately, of course, to trip people up. But what you find is people don't read the instructions. And the people who don't read the instructions are the same people who don't read the email properly. They, they, they misunderstand a client whenever they're emailing in with a question about the proposal. Yeah. You know, so it's the same thing. And, and whenever you feed that back, yeah, yeah, whenever you feed that back to their line manager or whatever, they, people notice those, you know, because they're consistent behaviors. So actually, it's just about coaching some of that stuff as well. And a lot of that comes out during, during the course of the days. So it's, it's just important to point that out, you know, about yeah. why there's so many tie backs within these activities versus, you know, what they do from nine to five. Yeah, it's I suppose even a feedback, sorry, JP, sorry, I mean, feedback ahead, just even from the employers themselves from, for the work that's been done, do they, do they see a difference in the same team when they're in that environment in comparison to their own working environment? Uh, well, it would be fair to, it would be fair to say that certainly when people arrive on the day, the people that are boisterous in the office and people are quiet in the office, so it's the, it's same, the same, you know, yeah. it's the same yeah. thing, absolutely. I yeah. think, I think though that what what you try and do um, is to so so if it's a leadership day again, you know, the thing that's the thing we're talking about, I think here. But if it's a leadership day, what you'll do is that you'll have people split into groups normally, and they'll all take turns in in practicing leadership and vulnerabilities and everything else. So one of the really interesting things I come out that I think comes out of the day is the characteristics that emerge out of people that are may not may not be previously obvious in their place yeah. of work. Um, and because they're in an environment which might suit them. So I mentioned some of the different delivery methods around outdoors is a big one. Obviously, that's the conventional one, but increasingly, you know, people are become more interested in virtual reality. Yeah. It's a big thing as well. And I think actually whenever, excuse me, some of these characteristics start to emerge, that's when you start to feel as if you're getting some, you're getting into some real depth with it. So yeah. who's to answer, answer your question directly, Sean? Yeah, absolutely. When people arrive, of course, you know, the people are the same as, as when they got there. But I like to think that by the end of the day, people have come away from that feeling that they all know a little bit more about themselves and importantly about each other, you know, and what yeah. their kind of strengths are. Because we do try to take a bit of a, a values-based approach um, with that. So, it, you know, it's about identifying strengths within individuals and trying to build on that potential rather than necessarily pointing out a lot of flaws in people. And of course, there's, a, there's an element of challenging folks and, and mm -hmm. trying to get people to to own up to own that you know know some of those things as well and work on them but generally it's a values-based approach so we're always really consciously looking for those strengths you know i was yeah. just from the point that from my point of view what i was wondering was that in a working environment we kind of talk about the creating a safe environment you know where people feel that they can they can feel comfortably you know that people aren't going to put them down if they make a mistake and things like that i'm just sort of wondering what impact that has when maybe the more confident people in the working environment are taken out of that comfort zone put into a difficult environment or maybe even vice versa with the people who don't feel overly comfortable sometimes in their working environment when they get out and get outdoors and spend the day with the full team that they start to feel more comfortable and they come out of themselves mm -hmm. a wee bit more i always think that's interesting yeah. just to set no, no, yeah yeah no totally i i usually find that actually there's generally speaking whenever it's a team and you're you'll you'll design activities in a way which tries to tries to foster better team work and better team relations usually people are very encouraging I don't often have it where um, people are, so okay, when you arrive today, it might be a little bit disconnected, but it's jointed. But usually, um, what usually brings a smile to my face is whenever you're having someone who's afraid of heights, for example, and they've had to climb a 25 foot totem pole um, to get on a zip line, you know, and, and then what you find is the people in their team are really encouraging of those yeah. people as well. And that, that, is, that is a big journey, both for the individual, and how they're kind of feel as if their role is within that team, but also for the other people and how they kind of view that that person as well. And it's 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 just such an important such an important thing. So look, I'm not I'm not saying it's like I, I'm a miracle worker. Um, <laughs> of course, there's going to be challenges. What I do is part of the puzzle. You know, we want to try and we want to try and do what we do as an extension of people's HR function. You know, in a way that it's part of the wider you know yeah. wider program of development for teams individuals and everything else but mm -hmm. certainly at the end of the day whenever someone comes to take part in, in one of my activities uh, you they will know more about themselves within the context of these yeah. topics That's and true. um and each other yeah i guess it's a bit of a it's in that sense from what you're saying it's, it's kind of a, a 360 review on the the operate like the the relationships between uh the leaders the formal leaders like the managers or supervisors and their team as well because 
you mentioned there, there you're pushed in every way and everyone's pushed in, in the same ways to find out where's your comfort zone um, leadership wise how will you excel in this uncomfortable environment and I think that it's great in terms of I'm thinking I've got my management cap on and if I had our team out I'm thinking you know we try to actively find who the leaders are and, and give them opportunities even if it's outside their role um, and maybe for managers who go on these types of courses and, and maybe that they're sitting back they might learn about team members who maybe haven't been given an opportunity in the workplace to showcase these things have all of a sudden led the way in an environment as Sean said that's quite difficult for everybody um, and uh, from a 360 perspective you can kind of say well you know the managers should be able to sit back and say maybe maybe we're not providing the opportunity for this person or maybe this person operate uh, a, a, let's let's say um, ability ways in certain scenarios but actually hang on it they were actually really good at this and we haven't unearthed that yet but this one yeah. activity has taught us now moving forward in this uh, project that we're going to be doing, this person's actually perfect for it because it's going to be quite difficult and it's going to be challenging and they clearly are going to lead the way. Yeah, no, and uh, yeah, totally. There's, there's part of, there's part of that and about feeding that back and saying, look, Hey, you've got that. I know you've got that promotion coming up. You should really consider, you know, JP for that. Um, Cause he demonstrated all these, you know, all these uh, competencies during our engagement with them. And, and I think there's, I think there's definitely something there. I would suggest I'm through this end of the, the ring as well though because i don't know what your experience is um i think i'm going to kind of tee this up a wee bit but certainly from working here and being from here we're very lucky to have kind of a small business economy a, fa- a lot of family-run businesses which is awesome you know a great place to do business yeah. um a part of the challenge of 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 having companies though that are quite organic and that the reward people that are already in the company and usually they'll get promoted into managing managerial positions yeah. is that what tends to happen is people don't necessarily get the training that they may otherwise get, um, you know, in a larger organization yeah. to, the, to be able to manage effectively. Yeah. So I think some usually, right, so the, so the people that we're, the people that are coming on our programs normally are people that are already in some kind of leadership position, line manager, department, whatever. And it's, and it's folks that are like, you know, they're already there. And actually, big part of what you do and and this this is where it gets sometimes a little bit tricky when you challenge people about their leadership style because of course you've got your leaders there who are very focused on completing tasks yeah and that's that's where they're at and then you have other leaders that are maybe a bit more kind of democratic and or people really that just want to keep folks happy i think all of us all three of us on this call and everyone will be somewhere on that spectrum yeah. and yeah. really what we try to say to leaders is simply um, you know, you're just on there somewhere and it's just about trying to figure out where that is. And once they figure out where that is, then it's much easier for them to go, okay, this is now what I need to work on. Yeah. So I, I actually think that as much as there's different individuals and different folks, and yes, yeah, sometimes you do get people along where they're all part of a department and one of them is in a leadership position and some of these other people might be working for that individual. But a lot of the time they're all managers, you know, who are working yeah. for an organization. And what you're able to identify is there's you know where maybe the gaps are and where they can kind of where they can kind of improve. Yeah, that's I think the great thing about that William is as well is that people can see do it with themselves as well. They'll see their own strengths and weaknesses, but as well as that, you'll see your own team's strengths and weaknesses, and it, it kind of opens it up a wee bit. And I think as you, as you say, sort of they're, they're on a lane. It doesn't necessarily mean anybody has to be rubbish at what they do. They just have different strengths, so it's about them kind of coming together as a team and knowing what the strengths are, so we can actually perform a lot better together so i think that's kind of the way you sort of said that but the lane i think that's sort of quite good well yeah there's there's stuff there like for example so one of the things we do i'm going to give you an example of an activity because i think it's quite good don't steal it on me um, <laughs> it's all recorded but, uh, it's, all, it's copyright to yours now <laughs> yeah 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 so <laughs> you go so you're all you're both familiar with like climbing walls rock climbing that sort of thing where you've got to grab the different colored yeah. Yeah, handholds and fiddles and things. Yeah. So one of the things that we'll do with groups is blindfold them, and so the person not the, that's the person climbing, by the way, is blindfolded. And the idea then, so there's so the the idea, the way the workshops kind of set up, obviously, then is about communication, because if the, on the ground you've got their team, but you, but one person is a designated coach, and that person then has to try and coach the individual climbing around mm-hmm. like where they're supposed to go. So. There's a whole communication strategy in that about like, you know, move your left hand or just move a wee bit and the person's blindfold is going, where do I go, sorry, or what is it? 
And so that's that's part of it. So communication is a big is key. But after you debrief that activity, there's actually a big thing within that around empathy. And it's about how can how can I so say for example, I'm somebody who is um on the ground. So I'm just talking about the activity itself and then I'll try and think about how that works in the workplace. But how can I and someone who's on the ground, if I've never climbed that wall, how can I understand maybe the fear that person's going through? Mm-hmm. Um the issues they're facing, you know, within this very physical activity. Uh, but if I have maybe climbed it and I understand, if I've, if I've stood in their shoes, then it makes it easier for me to help guide and coach and kind of mentor that person. Yeah. And it's the same whenever you think about that in the workplace, because I think sometimes the challenge within leadership positions and the changing challenges that face all workforces, particularly now, mm-hmm. you know, it's very, very important for leaders to have empathy. Um, yeah. and about, I know you guys are great at that, you know, and you talk a lot about stuff in Aussie Bowl and trying to take people on that, trying to take those guys on the journey. And I yeah. think that's yeah. something that we miss out on. So, yeah, it's easy to talk about communication and it's easy to talk about some of these other topics. But the empathy thing is such an important leadership it's, factor. Yeah, well. it's, it's a, uh, empathy is a huge element of emotional intelligence. Um, it's so, so important to understand it and to practice it. And I suppose to have it for yourself as well. I think that sort of, um, Emotional intelligence is one that it, we always make sure is part of uh, any leadership program that we do. Um, in some shape or form, it, it's massively important, especially from the communication perspective, that people understand the, this is like one of your biggest tools in your toolkit for leading your people. Um, because if you don't understand and be empathetic for the, where somebody's coming from, I mean, there's many a time we've, we've, throughout the years of managing teams, um, we were doing pro- programs, management and leadership programs. There were people who were fantastic and they ticked the boxes in so many different ways, but where they lacked maybe becoming a great leader in a role was the, the lack of empathy sometimes and the, the emotional intelligence that was missing. And, and, that, and that's not a bad thing to, from the perspective of, you know, we, one of the calls we done um, with Renny Cariel, he, he highlighted it very, very well when he said, you know, in every team you have your manager, you have, the leader and then you have the expert and um, now we've always been highlighting the managers and the leaders um, but the expert the person who's particularly specialized in whatever role they're doing and um, he says it's ve- he says some most times you'll get somebody who's a manager and they're a very good manager and a slightly good leader or somebody who is in the management role and they're a fantastic leader but they're just an okay manager he says very seldom do you get somebody who has all those three elements um, and yeah. <laughs> I think the one thing that stands out is somebody who they're on point with their, their emotional intelligence. They understand, they're empathetic. Um, and just even before lockdown, there was, there was a team member I was working with that I was chatting and they were hopefully moving on to the leadership role. Everything's paused obviously now. But um, one of the conversations we had was I said, like, you're fantastic at everything you're doing. You're really good. You work well in the teams. I said, but the one thing you need to focus on here is some team members, you're 100% is never going to be there 100 percent and so your expectations and what you expect from them um in any role needs to be slightly different so it's about finding that happy medium so are they trying their best and is that are they giving you their best but if they are and it's maybe not meeting the expectations that you have for them and um, it's about coaching them in a way that you're saying you know okay, I totally understand where you're coming from and can you give me a little bit more instead of rolling the eyes? And let's face it, people get frustrated in roles and in the day-to-day, especially when you work in the hospitality environment, which um, lots yeah. of people have been. Um, when, uh, I'm trying to find a way to describe it without person. Um, it, it, when, when things get tough, okay, and your back's up against the wall, um, that's when you usually see people in their truest form. So William, you, you mentioned that there, it's about getting them out of their comfort zone, getting them in a, in a situation where they're being challenged in every way. Um, and that's where you usually see the leaders coming out. That's where you see the people who might be usually the loudest person in the room, maybe sink it back a little bit because when it comes, when the going gets tough, they're like, uh, don't want it. Um, and it's in those environments that we try to explain to people from a leadership perspective. You don't have to be all things to all men and women. You just have to be able to facilitate everybody else trying to be the best they can be for the group. And there's so much, so much behavioral psychology behind it. People don't realize whenever you're, when you're, when you're teaching and trying to facilitate um, workshops or, 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 or um, days out like that, so much time and effort put into 
the behavioral side of things, like why people behave in the way they do and helping them understand that it's okay if you don't have the answer to that right now. And yeah. yes, you might be the senior manager of a very successful uh, SME, but you don't have to have the answer every time. And in fact, by showing that vulnerability that you've mentioned, you're actually going to build the relationships from within your team even more because you're you're closer to human than they thought before. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, and yeah. I, I think some of the traps that our managers fall into, uh, they create these kind of very dependent cultures as well, which is you know like very dependent on them. And like, so what will happen is the um, efficiency of a business will be there'll be impacts on that because every single time. A decision needs to be made or information or an answer is answer needs to be got somewhere they always have to go to the same individual the same manager the yep. same person and nothing can be done without them and so that they're they've actually become a blockage in the yep. company and it's interesting how and it, it feels like you know i, I was going to just listen to you there i was thinking about the word trust you know and obviously that's a big part of a big part of empathy and that's a, like a two-way thing but for me it just feels like it is a lot of it is about letting people know and helping people understand that they don't have to know all the answers like you say you know it's very it's it's just as important for them to empower others to try and figure yes. it out for themselves um be there to support them absolutely but i think and i guess you guys will find it a lot you know when you go into organizations and you start to figure out or speak to people you go yeah there's for these individuals here there's nothing gets past them unless they make the decision and it creates a lot of, it creates a lot of problems you know yeah. both because both because on the one side it slows things down, but then the other, the people who are working for that person within the department, there's no development for them because every single time they need to know something, they're just going to that that leader, that manager, yeah. and uh, and getting it, you know. So it's, we've, um, we've see, yeah, we've seen that so many times, and and in in scenario, sorry, Sean, I don't cut across you, but I just want to make this one point that you do find that whole careers from say uh, line management or middle management careers have been stubbed because they've maybe had a senior manager who uh, just tried to do everything and it may have been yeah. for the right reasons may have been for the wrong reasons but then you find that somebody comes out with a lot of experience mm -hmm. they have experience in a certain category but they never allowed themselves to find out their vulnerabilities or to feel that it's okay not to have all the answers yeah. um, and, and we've found that that you don't realize that one small relationship actually have an impact on everything going on no, yeah, like the way i can develop as well is when, when people are sort of putting so much dependence on that one person as well that they feel that they have to have all the answers so even when they don't know them they'll kind of make them up whether they're their right answers or wrong answers and i think yeah. a lot of them comes from something that you said earlier on about i think a, a lot of workplaces here we've seen it for a bit just try to promote people because they're good workers yeah but they're not looking for them other qualities that you've mentioned there that, that you look for in, the, in those um the team building days and that you know the qualities of communication and having that empathy you know, a lot of that's missed and this good worker suddenly is now lost but trying to find all the answers but doesn't want to ask because the trust has been put into them to do the job and it, it just spirals out of control then and no, there's no training or anything provided for it no i agree and like it's it's then how do you kind of value the whole thing that we talk about and, and it's our vocation because the only yeah. other way you can do it of course is that you externally hire somebody into this like kind of yeah. middle management position or or senior leadership position which i think is there's 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 sometimes good reasons for that and that's okay but usually it causes problems because not only is it usually quite expensive but there's a lot of people kind of put out a wee bit because they're going i've worked for this company for 10 years and i was overlooked yeah. you know for position not going to leave and maybe yeah. you member of staff so actually there's lots of ways to achieve what you want to achieve i.e bringing in external ideas and refreshing you know your culture or you yeah. know the way your teams work together by bringing in some of these some of these that sounds like a very shameless plug <laughs> <I'm doing laughs> <myself. laughs> we'll <laughs> it is it's very shameless but it, but it but it's an alternative you know it's a way of doing it where you've got these great people that are great at certain things and simply if you try to if you bring in some of these external external ideas it can be really really helpful because all the stuff that i do guys is very practical you know it's like I think sometimes it can get a bit lost and people feel it's a little bit, um, I've heard to say the word therapy there, it's not like that at all, but it's about, I think it's, I think it's like we're doing things and activity to identify where an organization is maybe struggling with communication to then recommend how that, how whenever they go back to their day job, they can do things differently, you know, they can yeah. make 
changes, which will improve how the business operates. So it's, it, I think it's like, it, it's important to see the value in that, I think, and like, yeah. and think about constantly keeping it practical, constantly keeping um, it interactive and impactful ultimately for the people who are participating. Yeah, just, just even anyone listening, obviously, who maybe have an idea, because obviously with things going on, and I understand that budgets are very constrained at the moment, and, and there's so many difficult decisions being had. But for those organizations who are lucky enough to understand that bringing somebody like you in is actually much because I, I find that even in the past with us, Sean, you'll notice we, we would have organized any type of team building ourselves. Um, and while we believe that we were putting our own sort of measurements in the background about everything we've discussed here, when you have somebody like William who comes in and you can understand that there's a lot that goes on in the background and there's a lot of feedback and recommendation that comes from um, deciding to go with them. I think that for anyone watching, and it's a bit of a plug for you, William, it's, uh, and it is shameless, but I don't care. But, you know, you can, you can, I, can, I can even just chat. <laughs> I, can, I can see the, the value in allowing somebody like you who knows what they're doing to take the pressure off the, the leaders and, you know, let them become part of the experience rather than them taking a step back. And because I feel like you, you, don't have to, you don't have to live on your shield at all times. You can just lay it down and, and be part of the team because I think that um, maybe maybe you're watching and you are that person that William has mentioned and unfortunately and you didn't mean to but you've become that person who has to answer everything and the pressure's put on you maybe it's your fault maybe it's not your fault um, and maybe something like working with William to go out and do, do a day out where there's more to it it's not just a day out it is part of the bigger strategy of your, your team building um, and, and the culture and you know have a think about it really reach out because um, I think we could go on and on, but I know William, you said you had some arrangements afterwards, so I don't want to. I don't want to go on too long. But well, I have to go buy football boots. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, like, it's very important. Very very important. Say, William, uh, at least at least make something up. It's more important than. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got to work in writing a program. Here, depend, depending on who you are, that could be very important. But look, like, um, William, where can where can uh, anybody watching this find you if they want to get in contact? Uh, well, I, I'm, so you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I always respond on the LinkedIn stuff. I put a lot of content out there. You can find it a bit more about, I guess, some of the stuff that I've been talking about. You'll find it a bit more about my journey as well. So you can see, kind of see some of the stuff, uh, the activities that we take part in, which are, which are yeah. good. Um, also, my website, www.manabulearning.com. Go on there. You can contact me uh, via the website. and You'll find all my contact information on that. And I look forward to hearing from folks. Absolutely. Delighted. Well, I hope somebody watches this and says, do you know what, this is the answer um, to the issues we've been having. And especially in the climate at the moment, um, I think it's so important to physically <laughs> and mentally bring the team back together. And uh, uh, obviously, it's great technology that we have here, but sometimes you, you just need to take a, a breather. And people like yourself, especially yourself, um, can genuinely help ignite yeah. that fire again and get everyone going again. What, what I would say as well, just as a kind of a, a final thing, is that, that, you know, there's obviously there's a lot of, you know, social distancing and all that stuff is, is included in anything we do, but it is continuing. And the great thing about it is that, like, the worry, I guess, externally is that you look at it and go, that's the first thing companies are going to cut. Companies really value the, um, their people. They value the connection of their people. And yep. my clients are constantly talking to me that they're worried about um about people feeling disconnected because they're not in the office they're not having the same thing they've had for the last few years and what can they do you know what can they do to fix that so so people are are feeling like it's very very important and i think that's just been such a an affirming thing for me yeah. is that it's it feels like it's very validating and it's like that's good you know people always understand the value of it even even at the moment which I'm is delighted great. i'm delighted to hear that to be honest with you um it's good it's good to see that people are more forward thinking than maybe they were in the past and they understand that this is i mean I put a post out last night and you, you mentioned attrition, you mentioned turnover and um, I think it was £3,000 is the average in the UK for recruiting one person. Uh, that's a lot of money um, and if you are if you decided to, obviously we, we're, all, we, we're in business as well, we obviously want to help organisations with that and that you're, you fit so well into what we're trying to achieve and I think that's why we we'll probably will be working together moving forward yeah. but um, understanding the value that's within your team learning that there are skills there that you don't know are probably there in your team that you could definitely be highlighting and, and utilizing and um, moving forward with opportunities and so 
reach out to William if you if you want to learn more about your team and, and understand what would be the best way forward, especially when it comes to opportunities from within your team. But Sean, I'll let you I'll let you outro us here. Well, William, thanks very much. Um, great chatting to you today, um, as always, and um, we look forward to our relationship in, in the future, Absolutely. as I said. Guys, um, our, our tagline is actually featured heavily in what we spoke about today, so remember, engage, enable, and empower.